everyone this is Evgeny and we are back in Langraph advanced series videos so today we are concentrating on MCP servers and we'll check if everything is really rosy in this area so join me and let's dive in together but traditionally before we start I wanted to mention that this video is highly supervised by angry cats and if you're curious what are those then still you can check the link below the merch is there and we continue all right, we are back in MCP area and here today we're gonna load the MCP server configuration from the JSON config and here's the file and this is pretty standard one from Cloudy, I think and here we are going to read this configuration from the file and for that we have the function I'm reusing the one from uh, introduction series and uh, we have the server configuration, we have the transport for standard input-output and some parameters here. And now we can load the tools. I'm using multi-server MCP client from LangChain for that. And if I check how many I have at 73. And for example, the first one, we have the structure tool and uh, significant attributes here has name, add comment to pending review. And this is GitHub, just refreshing memory. We have a description, add review, comment to requesters, last pending, pull request review, etc. And some additional parameters as well, which we are not interested in at the moment. So let's try and reuse these MCP tools in our React agent system. And well, probably you know what I'm going to say that it's really extremely simple, right? We have a React agent and I'm just providing tools here. That's it. And then I have specific uh, system message that describes the GitHub agent, which, uh, which is the only purpose is to help users with GitHub related tasks. So I'm compiling this guy and uh, we have this one, pretty big one. Uh, I'm trying to reuse, I'm trying to construct images locally right now. So I'm not dependent on API, which is laggy last time. And uh, here we have the agent, we have tools, that's pretty standard. And for testing, I created this simple request that uh, I'm asking to check my GitHub account. So I'm not specifying who I am. It should be clear from the MCP server tools perspective, probably. And I'm asking to uh, check my recent work on specific project. And finally, I want to understand what I've been working on lately and have some brief overview in natural language about that. So let's run it. And here we are, look at that. This is my request, then it was a tool call and this is remote MCP already, it's uh, get me. It gets back some information about myself, about details and uh, uh, profile, you know, I don't, don't care much about that, but just basic information about me that GitHub contains, right? And then it was another tool call, list commits for the owner, that the owner was from get me function, tool call and the repository as well. So we have some comments back and uh, and then the agent thought, okay, that's enough information to generate the response. So it briefly posted some overview of the comments and then it put some summary. So we do have some summary, right? And everything works well so far. We have, just to refresh your memory again, we have a configuration of MCP server we loaded the configuration, we connected to the MCP server, we used this tooling that the MCP server provides in our agent and then it was able to progress and uh, process the request and generate some information, kind of summary, like what we really wanted. And uh, is it everything fine here? I would say no, because the number one problem I can see is that the number of MCP tools we have is 73 and this is the situation where we have this single MCP server, but just imagine our agent has multiple, several MCP servers and the number of available tools then grow kind of exponentially already. And this is a really tricky situation because the more tools you have, the more uh, description of the tools you provide to the LLM and the more confusing that is for the LLM. And there are different ways how you solve that problem. Like really this huge number is, is really something wrong here because it's getting confused. Like LLM will be confused by amount of information, the possibilities, what tools are there. And 
if you work with this agent like along the way during the time you would recognize that a lot of in a lot of cases where the tool was not used at all like the model was only hallucinating producing some results without asking the tool etc and this is a really bad situation well the easiest way would be to reduce this number right and this is the way for example the windsurf goes for example if i go to uh, mcp server it's 73 tools as well here but look at that what what they have to optimize uh, they recommend that i would disable tools and keep maximum as 50 tools for all the mcp servers so this is their way of solving this like i can disable it manually for example something i i think i don't need and well they still allow me to enable everything but then they they are saying that okay then we are not guaranteeing you anything here with this setup and basically also they have the limitation of 100 tools as well so it's really problematic point like you don't you it's just just not, not possible to enable all the mcp servers you know about in the world and have a really intelligent agent which knows about everything which, is, which can access whatever you want right it's really problematic situation here so you need to very thoroughly think about which tools you want to enable and which tools you want to use for your specific use case uh, but anyway, this is the way uh, how Cascade and Windsurf performs this. And uh, today I'm going to show you maybe another way how you could do this in a different way. And this is, is using supervised architecture. So what, we, what would be the idea? The idea would be that we would we will create several agents, smaller agents, sub-agents, that will be under the control of supervisor. And those then we can separate or group all our tools by some logical conditions and provide this grouping to agents so it will be clear like which so every agent will have specific smaller area of responsibility and supervisor will be orchestrating these agents and the responsibilities so what do we need for that first of all let's take a look at mcp tools i'm taking the mcp tools the first one and here we have very significant information name and description like this one the name is add comment to pending review and this comes from mcp server again and uh, the description is add review comment to the requester's latest pending pull request review and what we can do we can provide to the llm all the descriptions and ask to do this to perform this grouping for us so what do we need for that we have an agent definition and this is pedantic model and here we are interested in generating the agent name so we, we are going to generate this on the fly practically in dynamic nature we're interested in agent name we interested to have the responsibility of this agent and this one we'll be using in the system message for a supervisor so supervisor knows what exactly this agent's responsibility is we are interested in system message as well and this is one we need for constructing our agent and we need a list of tools that belong to this agent according to responsibility right and finally we are interested in getting back list of such agent definitions so having that agent definition thing uh, let's create agent definitions so what we are doing here first of all we are collecting the tool information it's a name and description then we are generating our prompt and here's the important thing that we are providing all the names and descriptions of each tool and we are asking to create several groups and each group at the end will be an agent and for that we are providing here the tool information and we are returning back structured output which is our agent definitions which is a list of agent definition and then we also important thing here we, we should normalize agent names because we're going to modify our message thread and different models react differently on agent names so it should be normalized as well and here what we are doing uh, it's just uh, we are replacing all the spaces with underscores and making lowercase okay and let's give a try and run this function see what's the output of it so we have the our we have our mcp tools list we create uh we call the function create agent definitions and we return back the agents all right and if you check we have four agent or four agent definitions like if you check the first one for example what do we have here we have a pull request management agent 
and its responsibility is to manage and facilitate the entire life cycle of pull requests from creation to review and merging. Then we have a system message as well, describing the agent itself, what its responsibilities. And then we have a list of tools that relate to these responsibilities. And it's much less than 72 or 73 we had it previously, right? So what's now? We, have, we do have agent definitions. We have to create specific agents. And this is why we have this function create agent. So what's happening here? We are using this create React Agent High Level API. We are defining the model. We are defining the agent tools. And this one is a filtered list from all the tools, uh, filtered by the only the ones that agent has. Uh, we have the prompt from agent definition. We have the name from agent definition. And for simplicity, we are also logging, printing some information there so we can see the process. Like in production, you don't need this. That's clear, right? So I'm running it, and look at that. We have one, two, three, four agents defined. So we have workflow and automation agent. We have repository and notification management agent. We have issue coordination agent. And the first one was pull request merge management agent. A specific uh, tool, specific definitions, specific uh, system messages. And uh, just to prove that these agents are really agents, like uh, we can even draw the first one. That's classical React agent as well, right? So now it's time to create a supervisor, the last step here, and the different points from the previous that we need to provide our agents uh, information about the agents, what they can do, what agents are available for supervisor. And we're generating it from, uh, again, from agent definition. And we print in uh, the system message just to double check how it looks like for supervisor. And then we create supervisor. We have our agents previously created. It's a list of agents. We have the model, the prompt, and practically that's it. So this is our system message. And look at that. Um, pretty standard wording here and there, but this one was dynamically created. The list of agents and their responsibilities. The supervisor is aware when to call which agent. All right, and if I draw it, it's kind of classical supervisor architecture with one, two, three, four agents in place. Okay, and now we can test it the same kind of request. Uh, we are invoking supervisor. All right, we are there. Uh, let's check what we have. So first uh, tool call repository notification management agent. And this one decided to make a get me call. Again, some information about myself back. And then the second call was list notifications, as well as list discussions, as well as list uh, code scanning alerts. So gathering a lot of information about the repository. And look at that. I think this time it's much more comprehensive, right? Like more calls to gathering for more information requested, right? Kind of. Already looks much better for me, the result. And uh, it knows the owner. Uh, what else? Uh, list depend about alerts as well. Secret scanning alerts, like list tags, like listing everything just to, to, to create the proper summary. And based on that, uh, it was enough information collected and, 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 and. And I have summary here. All right. But anyway, you saw already that even with this separating the concerns with several sub-agents, the output was much more, like, was richer, much more comprehensive, and a lot of information was requested just comparing to the first case where it was single agent responsible for everything. All right, that was it for the video, and I hope you found something interesting and useful for you, and you have a better understanding that MCP is not the answer to everything, it has some drawbacks. And it was me, Evgeny. Thanks a lot for sticking with me till the end. I really appreciate it. And I will see you next time in the next video about LangGraph. Thank you. Take care and bye-bye.